Daniel LeBeau. Welcome back to the Fourth Revolution, where we discuss stocks for your portfolio of the future. And these stocks for the future, these innovators, are falling back into market favor as money managers take on this barbell investment approach with stagflation concerns running rampant in the market ever since this jobs report last Friday, the September jobs report, which illustrated accelerating wage growth on top of a decelerating jobs market. And, you know, stagflation is a sign of inflation on top of slow economic growth. And that's kind of what this jobs report showed, because wage growth is the uh, is the stickiest form of inflation. And it is concerning going into this uh, th this normalization of global economies and investors, like I said, are positioning themselves to take on this uh, imminent, if not certain, uh, you know, a result of, uh, of of these these supply chain bottlenecks and kind of this this uncharted water territory that we're in right now with econo economies, you know, soaring out of the pandemic with monetary policy being the key driver, and that's kind of what's driving this sentiment towards stagflation is that monetary policy people you know these these central banks just printing money are causing inflationary issues that aren't necessarily going to be reflected in economic growth. So the barbell approach is effectively taking the two extremes of the risk reward spectrum, hence the barbell, you know, weights on to the two different sides of this spectrum. We have the ultra high risk, high reward innovators um, with, with the most potential over this next, next decade, but also present the most uncertainty due to a lot of these companies and no unprofitable profiles and the fact that they're, they're not going to see their, their peak earnings for years and years to come. And it's hard to kind of estimate those companies, but that end is the uh, the high risk, high reward, probably about 15, 20 percent of the allocation. And the other end, we have the, the entire portfolio hedged with uh, with low risk or no risk, as I like to call it, uh, equities in the defensive spaces that will yield you strong dividend returns. So you're not looking for capital gains on this end, kind of just looking for a market hedge to uh, to protect yourself from the risk on the other end that you have. The, the smaller allocations. So we're looking at sectors like utilities, looking at healthcare, consumer staples. You know, a lot of these companies that are driving three percent plus dividends and don't move a lot with the economic market. And the the, the, the idea here is to hedge your portfolio, uh, kind of deviate your portfolio, should I say, against systemic market risk, which is what these middle of the road risk reward plays are going to do. They're going to follow the market a little bit more than what you have on these low beta, low risk plays, as well as the secular growth, no matter what high growth plays that are going to be uh, continue to be, you know, big, big disruptors in this market moving forward. And the key is to pick the best positioned high growth. Plays. So that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on high growth plays that are best, sorry, best positioned, not only from a valuation standpoint, but from a fundamental standpoint going into this fourth industrial revolution, which is commencing now. So let's take a look at the, at the charts and take a look at some of the opportunities that we have here. This is the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield. You can see we've had some chop since uh, since February, trading all over the board. We had a huge run up in yields from the end of 2020 into the, uh, like I said, into February of 2021, as as the markets price in this imminent Fed tapering, and the Fed's currently purchasing 120 billion in, in assets each month, fixed income assets, that is, and they're pricing that in. Here, but you know Jerome Powell's steadfast stance on this transitory inflation um, positioning has has caused this chop as of late, and now you know we had some concerns about inflation. This drop off here from the jobs report is uh, concerns about stagflation. We had a drop off in the ten year, but looking at shorter term notes like the five year and the two year, these things took off. And this is because the risk in the short term is a lot higher than the risk in the long term. So investors are, are getting out of these shorter duration notes. Um, like I said, the, the, it's pretty much the one through the five year that they're getting out of and jumping into the 10 year plus. And you can see even the 30 years coming down. Remember that yields and bond prices are inversely correlated. So the more demand for a bond, the lower the yield's going to be. So that's what's causing this drop in yields is, uh, is, is kind of just fear.
This is Kathy Woods, ARK Innovation ETF, ticker ARKK. And this has become the benchmark for uh, innovative disruptors in the market these days, with 2020 being an absolutely blowout year for this ETF. It exhibited 150% returns on an annual basis last year, but it's traded sideways um, so far this year, kind of discounting this entire ETF's holdings on a, on a, on a multiple basis as earnings go up. And sales go up now. Not all of these companies are able to uh, to turn a profit quite yet, you know, considering their their high growth profiles. Um, but they are definitely getting discounted as we trade sideways since effectively the beginning of March. Um, but we are we're catching a bid as of uh, the beginning of October with investors, like I said, taking on this this barbell approach with with high growth, high potential equities like we have. And uh, Kathy Wood's ARK ETF, as well as these uh, these dividend yielders, such as utilities. You can see this bid right here for, for this segment of the S&P 500. This is the, the ticker is XLU, kind of a basket of all of those, uh, all of those, those utility ETFs yielding over 3%. Um, you can see the same kind of bid for, for real estate as well in the S&P 500. And these are the, uh, the safer plays with the high yields that I've been talking about on the other end of the barbell. So this is a, in a very apparent play in the markets today, and it could be very profitable if you jump into, uh, into this strategy moving forward here. Getting that high risk, high reward allocation correct is the most important thing about this barbell strategy as there's so many low risk, high yielding plays out there that um, that you don't really need to be as, as discretionary with those. But with these high-risk, high-reward plays, stock picking is super important. So I'm going to give you three plays that are biased today for this next decade of, uh, of, of, of innovation and digitally driven growth. So we have Splunk here. This company is a leader in real-time machine data analytics and management. And it's kind of fallen out of favor with the market since its transition to the cloud, which can be a painful margin crunching process, but it's very necessary. We saw this with both Microsoft and Adobe, who successfully made this transition, this transformation to the cloud, and it drove their stocks and multiples to levels that they'd never seen before after they successfully transitioned over the past decade or so. Um, so Splunk, like I said, is just now coming out of this, uh, this, this transformation discounting and coming into its own with recently, you know, analysts have just been upgrading the stock to the wazoo. I'm looking at price near term price targets of 200 plus and long term. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing hit a thousand dollars over the next decade as it becomes a leader. Like I said, in this uh, in this real time data management segment, which is uh, which is exploding and becoming necessary to be competitive in a lot of different spaces. Here is SoFi Technologies ticker SOFI. Uh, this stock has, was a mean stock. Prior, as it went public with Chamath's SPAC IPO, um, and this this kind of took off because Chamath has been the, the so, quote unquote savior of Wall Street bets because of his positioning on the the kind of asymmetric information and access to the financial markets that these Robinhood traders have. So they jumped into all of his stocks, whether it be Virgin Galactic, Clover Health. Open door and like I said, SoFi. But this stock has come down to fundamentally sound levels and is a buy today with analysts just starting to get into this, as well as big money managers with uh, the deep pockets to push this thing higher. So, we're looking at near term price targets of $25 to $30 a share. And just like Splunk, this thing has just an unbelievable amount of upside going into this this digitalizing revolution for finance. It's a fintech company focused on consumer finances. And one of the big catalyzers going into 2021 is gonna be the deferment of student loans being pulled by the government. And they're gonna to have to, they're likely going to refinance. And SoFi's huge product catalog for these refinancing abilities is gonna be a, uh, a big beneficiary of this refinancing uh, wave that we're expected to see next year. So UiPath, this is a leader in automation, a leader in automation as well as a kind of just a pure play AI company. And it's really been discounted since its IPO with very little revenue and, uh, and no profitability in sight. But this company is on the cutting edge 
of uh, of this of this AI technology and Kathy Wood, like I said, the leader in in stock picking for innovative companies, has been adding to her position in UI Path. The ticker is Path P A T H, um, and I think the stock is a buy right here at fifty dollars a share. This barbell approach can be done with ETFs as well. You can just use one of the uh, the SPDR, sorry, the Spider S and P five hundred ETFs for the you know, the utility space, the consumer staple space, and the, the real estate space, which are both going to give you strong dividend yields as well as, um, as, as good, you know, solid diversification within these, these defense sectors for your, you know, low end of this risk reward spectrum. For the high end, like I said, it is important to pick the right stocks. And Kathy Wood has actually proven to do this over the last couple of years. So I think investing in ARC is a broader um, ETF for this allocation is not a bad idea. And like I said, you want a higher allocation in these lower return plays as they will hedge your portfolio against the risk of the higher rewards. So you're getting that same required return that you want out of just buying middle of the road index type funds, but you're losing the uh, systemic market risk that's associated with these middle of the road risk reward plays. So the barbell approach, like I said, it's a little bit more complicated to, to, to implement, but I think it has great upside potential going into a potentially stagflationary period. So don't forget to check out zax.com slash promo where we have the surprise trader run by our very own Dave Bartosiak. And uh, check that out. Like I said, zax.com slash promo. Thanks for watching, guys.